Hi, this is Mr. Reese, and this video is going to go into what logarithms are. Basically, we're going to define them and then explain how we can uh, use them not only in solving exponential problems, but also use them in terms of graphs. So let's first start off with their relationship to exponents. Logarithms and exponents are actually inverses of one another. So if you have, say, y is equal to b to the power of x, the log, like exponents, is also going to have its own base. So it will be written simply as the log of y base b is equal to x. I want you to note that the base b here is small for the logarithms. Typically when you do exponents, the base is the big one, the exponent is the small one. Here the base is the small one and the exponent over here is big. That means the logarithm by definition is an exponent. Whenever you want to convert something from exponential to logarithmic form, all you have to remember is that it's an inverse. And we also need to remember that the base does shrink when you go to, ex to logarithmic form. When you go back to exponential form, it grows. And then, of course, we have this dynamic about switching x and y. I say, of course, because when you normally graph the inverse of any equation, the first thing you would do is you would switch the x and the y variables. If you have a graph, you would switch the x and the y coordinates. So in this particular case, we would switch the physical location of x and y. So what happens is x physically is no longer with b. It's by itself. y physically is right next to b. And that's what you see right here. Then after that, just don't forget to put a log in place. We will never have the log of nothing. It'll be the log of something. Let's say, for example, that we were going to take this and write it in logarithmic form. So we write the log. And recall that the base here is 5. Logs will also have the same base. Keep in mind that everything's a bit switched around. Notice how the base is big here. For the logarithm, it's going to be small. So we're just going to shrink that down. I also want you to notice that its location is a little different. Notice how the exponent is written up here as a superscript. Here, the base is written as a subscript. So everything is switched around. As for 4, which was the exponent, well, that's over here now. Let's take the other 4 that I had. It's over here now, and it's bigger. So it's no longer really going to be a power with 5. So it's switched places essentially with 625. 4 is over here. 625 is over here. So that's really it. OK, so now let's go the other way and convert this one to exponential form. Typically, we have this is going to equal some kind of answer. So how about we just say that it equals to x? So then what do we do? Start with your base first. Your base is 7. And then, now that we've taken care of that, and notice, by the way, log, small base, exponential, big base. So in this case, the base grew. Now we go ahead and switch those other two values. So the 20 and the x will physically switch places. So that'll be 7 to the power of x, not the power of 20. And that equals 20. It doesn't equal x. So that would be it. Now how about we do one where we have to evaluate a log, but without using a calculator. Let's say you were to determine the log of 81, base 3. Mind you, this again equals x. We're going to convert this to exponential form, which basically means we first start with the base, the base being 3. And then the 81 and the x will switch. So there we are. 3 to the x is equal to 81. And now what we do is we solve for x. The way you would go about it is you would focus on the 81. What we're going to do is we're going to rewrite 81 as a power of 3. 3 divides into 81 27 times. 3, in turn, divides into 27 9 times. And 3 divides into 9 3 times. 
So how many threes does it take to make 81? Four. So I'm going to rewrite 81 as 3 to the power of 4. So that about does it. You see the bases are the same. 3 does equal to 3. Because of that, 4 has to equal to x. So that's essentially it. Let's do one more. Let's say we have one with a radical this time. Just like before, we'll set equal to x. And now we will write this in exponential form. Start with your base first. That's this 6 here. And the base, by the way, is growing. And then we switch. So we switch these two values here, which means 6 will be raised to the power of x. And it won't equal x. It'll equal to the square root of 6. OK, that almost does it. Keep in mind that radical 6 is the same thing as saying 6 to the 1 half power, which means x has to be 1 half. So that's how you do a log without using a calculator. OK, so how about we change this to exponential form? The log of 1 over 100,000. One of the first things that you should note is that there's no base written. If there is no base written, we refer to that as the common log. And the common log has a base of 10. So, for example, if you have, say, the log of 4, that's the same thing as the log of 4 base 10, like so. You would just simply write in 10. We also have another occasion where a log doesn't have the base written in, and that's referred to as the natural log. That has a base of e. That's typically denoted with an ln. So if you see ln of 4, that can be simply rewritten as the log of 4 base e. ln will never have another base other than e. So a lot of times people will just simply write it like so, or like this. So let's get back to the problem. Determine the log of 1 over 100,000. First of all, let's again write that in with the base 10. There we are. And just uh, like we did before, we're going to put equals x here, and then we'll do our conversion, and that is we will rewrite this in exponential form. And here we go. Keep in mind the 10 is the base. And for the logarithm, the base is small. For exponential form, it's big, so the base grows. Recall that these two values essentially switch places. It won't equal x over here. It will instead equal 100,000. To help finish this off, you might recognize that 100,000 is actually a power of 10. So if you divide 10 into 100,000 the way we did with the earlier problem, where we had to divide 3 into 81, we should get 10 to the fifth power. And 1 over 10 to the fifth power is actually 10 to the negative 5. And that about finishes it. Since 10 is equal to 10, then x is equal to negative 5. And that is our solution. OK, how about we try another? Change this one to exponential form, the natural log of 1. Keep in mind that the natural log does have a base of e. So that's a log base e of 1. And like before, we said equal to x. Let's go ahead and change this now to exponential form, just like before. Recognize that since the base is e, it's gonna, that's going to have the power. And remember that the other two switch. Now you have to consider e to the what power is 1? Anything would equal 1 if you have a 0 power. Therefore, x equals 0. Because of that, that brings us to this conclusion. The log of 1 is 0, regardless of what the base is. And this is something worth remembering, because it does come up a whole lot.
In addition, I also want to point out that the log of any number that has the same base will equal to 1. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense. This b raised to the 1 power is equal to b. So if you have, say, the log of 9, base 9, you would just write 1. Okay, let's get to graphing. One thing that you have to remember about logarithmic graphs is that it is the inverse of an exponential graph. Let's take this exponential graph, for example. In this particular case, the rate is greater than 1. Therefore, we will make that assumption. If you wanted to determine the log graph, what you would do is you would, for any regular inverse, you would take the coordinates, like say this coordinate here, Let's say it's located at 0, 1. Then what you would do is you would switch the coordinates for that. So we wouldn't cross the y-axis. We would instead cross the x-axis. Log graphs and exponential graphs are symmetric about the y equals x line, which basically is just a diagonal cutting through like so. If you could fold on that line, you would get the log graph. Let's put an actual grid over this to give you an idea. Basically, if you have this coordinate here located at 0, 1, if you switch the values, you get 1, 0. And that would be that would be the point for the log. This is located at 1, 2. Therefore, for the log, that would be 2, 1. Again, just switch the coordinates. And then for the exponential, 2, 4, that would be 4, 2. Again, that's all there is to getting the log graph. You just simply take the exponential graph and switch the coordinates for the points. I also want you to note the asymptotes. For the exponential graph, the asymptote's running along the x-axis. Therefore, for the logarithm, it's running along the y-axis. How about we try an example? Let's say you get a graph, the log, of x base 3. I want you to note that the rate here is 3. Just as the base for the log matches the base for an exponential graph, if you were to graph, say, y is equal 3 to the x, your y-intercept would be 1, then the next number up would be triple, because that's the rate. You, you triple every single value after that. So 1 times 3 is 3. After you do that, then you triple that value, so you go up to 9. So then what happens is the graph just kind of slinks upward like so. For the log graph, it's the same thing, except we don't go upwards. Instead, we go sideways. We cross 1, 0 instead of 0, 1. We triple the x value instead of the y value. So that's 3, 1. Then you triple 3 and you get 9, which is out here. So what happens is we start from below and run towards the right. So that's your log graph. By the way, it should be noted that there is an alternative way to knowing this. If you don't, if you don't remember how to do the log graph, what you can do is you can take this and switch this to exponential form. In switching to exponential form, you begin with the base 3. And instead of equaling y, it'll equal x. So the power of 3 would be y. Once you do that, you can just simply do a simple t-chart. Now, normally when you do a t-chart, you would plug in values for x, get an answer for y, and then plot those points. But in this case, it would be easier to plug in values for y. So if you plug in, say, 0, that's 3 to the 0, which is 1. Then you plot 1, 0. If you plug in, say, 1, that's 3 to the 1, which is 3. Plug in 2, you get 3 squared, which is 9. And you just go right down the list. Again, that's available to you in case you forget the logarithm graph. Okay, let's try another, only this time with a translation. Before graphing this translation, let's first look at this without the translation. 
if you left off the minusing, what you would get is the log of x base 3. Now we just did that graph a second ago, so let's assume that we know how to do that one, and we'll just map that on there. Once you have that, all you have to do is figure out how we translate this. For this part here, x minus 1, this means we're going to be translating one unit to the right. This part here means we translate two units down. Remember that any number that's grouped together with x affects the x direction. Not grouped together with x affects the y direction. So all you would have to do is take your existing graph and shift over then move down. And you can do this point to point if you wish. Like you could take this point here and then move over one down two. Same thing with this point here, move over one down two. This point out here, move over one down two. Don't forget that the asymptote moves over as well. Or you can take the sim simply the graph in its entirety basically take the whole thing move over one down one two now if you do that notice again the asymptote goes with it so essentially when you're looking at this portion here it's telling you where the asymptote is going to cross so that's your graph by the way what if you didn't remember that and you wanted to switch this to exponential form. That's fine, but you would have to isolate the logarithm first. That means subtracting, rather adding 2 to both sides, and that would yield y plus 2. Now we write this in exponential form. Recall that the base is 3, so that's going to be the rate. Remember that there's a switch which basically means that it's not going to equal to y plus 2. It'll instead equal to x minus 1. So that's what you're seeing here. And what's situated over here will instead be y plus 2. Then we just simply add 1 to finish off. And you would plug in values. Only again, you wouldn't be plugging them in for x. Remember, for logarithms, everything is in reverse. So you'd plug in for y. You can start at 0 and just simply count up from there. And if you decide to do negative numbers, that's perfectly fine as well. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.